if all of us were punished for life for decisions we made at 15, I think it would be a terrible, terrible thing. I mean, we make, we do appalling things when we're 15, right? She, she was groomed. I never. Well, great for you, Michelle. What appalling things does your average 15-year-old go and get drunk when they're not supposed to? Yeah. Well, I, I think if you're a Muslim, that's actually pretty bad. She was groomed online. If, if she'd gone off with a paedophile, we'd feel sorry for her. If, if she was part of a gang and had been, uh, had been taken the wrong way, we'd feel sorry for her. If we'd she blew up your something. child, would you feel sorry for her? If she was my child, I would want her back. If yes. she blew up your child, would you feel sorry for her? She hasn't blown if up... If she the, did... The, she hasn't. The point if she did. She hasn't blown up anybody. What she was done was she went out there wrongly, right, making the wrong decision, thinking that, that, that it was a world that was totally different. She was 15. She was then married to a man she'd never met in her life. It was an Islamic marriage. She, she, said that she then had three children, all of whom died as babies. So we have a traumatised 19-year-old. All she's asking for is to be tried in this country for the crimes that she did. That's all she's asking for, that she, instead of being tried in some ghastly prison camp, right, where the terrible... Th I mean, you know, I mean, her, late, her third child died there. She's asking that she, she's tried in this country and jailed in this country. She's not saying, I am a complete innocent. She's saying, I made terrible mistakes. She I doesn't don't wash with me. I have no sympathy. Jennifer, are you going to talk some sense on this? Do you think she should be allowed back in? Mm. Mm, sorry, Michelle, but, yeah, no, I do think she should. Listen, do you know what? I think people kind of forget when they get to the age of 15 what they were like. And Scarlett is right. At the end of the day, grooming is a serious thing. Do you understand? So when you're groomed and at 15 years old and you're asked to do something, your mind, and especially because it's a man as well, it's like you're looking and you're thinking, well, OK, that's, that's it. I can, do, I can do all of these things and it's OK at that time. So when we look at everything that she's gone through... Everything, everything she's, gone, she's through. gone through. In a sense of being groomed, and nobody doesn't know that, she's been groomed, gone to another country, she's then had babies, every baby's died, then you're looking at the fact that the traumatised that she's gone through and the fact that she's not allowed to come back and speak her mind, just to speak and find out what happened, having to stand, having the case, it's... Benedict, yeah, no, I, I am pinning <laughs> all of my hopes for some sensible thinking well, to you. Well, here's the thing. I think I sit sort of squarely in the middle of all of you in that <laughs> I don't feel any sympathy for her whatsoever. She made her bed when it comes to the decisions that she made. And, yes, I understand that she was very young, but nonetheless, uh, you know, it, it, we were talking about the IRA or some other terrorist organisation. I still don't think, actually, it would make any difference whether she was groomed or not. She joined an awful organisation, and she should have known, even as a, as a teenager, you should know, actually, what it is that you're getting into. You should, you know, buy it, but where? But it must be said, actually, I think it says an awful lot about the state of British power itself where we feel actually the correct thing to do is when a woman, or a man for that matter, joins a terrorist organisation, we look for a loophole of how not to actually try them, how not to do the difficult thing. Because let's, you know, let's make no mistake here, it would be expensive, it would be very difficult, it would be quite dangerous. There's always the risk that she would come back and you know, help to radicalise other people in prison or be let out and you know, be back on the streets and you know, perhaps not renounce her views. It's actually very rare that people that join these organisations actually do renounce their views. However, I don't think it sets the right tone that the British government says to somebody who doesn't actually have a Bangladeshi passport, by the way, is just eligible to have one, says to them, well, no, you're not going to come back. You're somebody else's problem now. And that's your reward, actually, for being a traitor, is that we're not going to do anything for you. We're not going to try you. We're not going to try to seek any kind of vengeance or retribution. You're not going to have to look into the eyes of your fellow citizens who you betrayed and explain to them why it was you thought acceptable to go and join this organisation. So that bit doesn't sit very well with me, I must say. Well, uh, I mean, I must say, and your emails are flying in as well. Uh, a lot of people are saying, well, she's not 15 now, and I never did anything like this when I was 15. I understand what you guys are saying about, oh, she was groomed and she was only 15. That does not wash with me at all. It's the obvious thing to say if you actually want to get yourself back in. Of course, you're going to sit there and go, oh, but it wasn't me. I was groomed. Some random on the internet made me want to sit there and look at people getting beheaded. They made me want to support somewhere that puts people in orange boiler suits and sets them on fire in cages. That does not wash with me. Well, hold on, Michelle. But if so, if I mean, if you saw 50, there are 15 year olds in Britain, as Jennifer knows, who join gangs, do terrible things. Should they stay in jail forever? 
Uh, should have they chose at 15. They, do, they chose it's at 15. Okay. So, so what, for 15 year olds that commit murder on the streets that go around stabbing people, perhaps not for the rest of their lives, but for a very no, long no, time. We're, we're saying that Shamima should be a non person, basically. A non person. Well, I'm no, not we're saying, saying she's a non person. But I'd like to go to prison for a very, that. very, very but, long time. But that's what Michelle yeah, is saying. I'm saying that. So, <laughs> I think so what I'm saying is, why can't she come? Why can't she come back and face British justice? Because, right, in, to me, I think you should have a red line. You hear of people talking about, oh, this is my red line, and if you break this red line, and then someone does the next thing, and then they breach that red line, and nothing gets done. To me, if you want to sit there and say how much you despise the UK, these people hate us. They don't just dislike us a little bit. They dislike everything we stand for, everything, all of our way of life. The terror threat in this country has just been raised again. So Basically, you don't believe in redemption? I don't believe you don't that be somebody who who um, who at fifteen uh, who, who aligns themselves to this kind of I couldn't give a monkeys if she was fifteen or seventeen or twelve or twenty that card or oh, when she was a kid doesn't wash with me. I think it's just being thrown around in order to elicit sympathy. Doesn't get any sympathy from me. Fifteen year olds know what they're doing. Does not wash with me that by fifteen years of age you do not know that putting people in cages in boiler suits and setting fire to them, you do not know that that is wrong at 15. Well, there's something matter with you, honestly. It doesn't wash with me. It doesn't wash with me. You work with young people. I do, and like I said, at the end of the day, when you've got a young person, um, you have to be in their shoes to understand it. Um, to understand that you can get yourself involved in something that you would think, my God, how could you do that? But when you're in the midst of it, when you're in the midst of it, in the choices that you have, it's like, yes, OK, she's, she knows she's 15 years old and she could have done better. But when you are in the midst of it, in their shoes, then I don't think anybody can really say that this is what, you know, should happen to her. She's a British citizen. Let her come she's not here. Anymore. Let her come here. She, and she's she, not anymore, know. thank you. Yeah, she's a non-person. One thing, I, one thing I would say about stateless. that. Brilliant. One Good. thing I would say about, though, is I don't like the precedent of the British government being able to just repudiate your citizenship and saying, well, yeah. you're not our problem anymore. I think, realistically... She was eligible we for can, a different citizenship. She was though, eligible, but she? she didn't have it. And the thing is, I think if you want something done properly, you've got to do it yourself. I don't think we should just leave her at a camp in Kurdistan, who, as we've seen, you know, given the geopolitics of the region, is actually rather unstable. Who's to say that she will stay there indefinitely? Who's to say that mm -hmm. she might not be sprung? There have been many attempted escapes by former members of Daesh from these camps. I think she should be brought back home, and I think she should be put in prison perhaps for the rest of her life, perhaps just for that a very, very long happen, time. But you know that wouldn't happen. She'd come back to this country... <laughs> then the laws need to be changed, yeah. and it paid should for, put emphasis on that. She'd come back to this country, paid for by us lot as uh, taxpayers, by the way, because she'd get legal aid. She'd get sent to prison. Um, she'd get released in, if you ask me, a small amount of number of years. She'd be back on the streets to create absolute havoc. I think it's you awful. You have no that idea, is. Michelle, whether she... You have Do you no want to take idea. the chance? You would have, you take the chance? I don't. I would, actually, you have no idea what what she thinks, right? You have no idea whether she'll, she, that actually she could be one of these people, and there are people who are working with Prevent, working with things who've, I mean, like gang members who've <laughs> said, you know... We have some idea what she thinks. She keeps on going on national television. She keeps on going, uh, OK, and, and each time she says, it's over. I'm says completely, I regret it. So, 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 And you may learn, learn a lot from her as well. So, you know, there's things that Working with young people that just do things that you think, wow, wow, could you do that? And then you have a conversation with them. It's like you get into their heads and you find out, oh, is that how you do I must say, though, I just find this... The whole, I, like, I like the idea that there's potential redemption on the cards for Shamima Begum, but actually the sheer rate at which members of, uh, of extremist organisations end up reoffending and not repudiating their beliefs is just too high, actually, for, for me to sort of buy into this. I'd love it to be true. I just don't believe that it is true. And I think that she would end up being uh, in prison for much of the rest of her life. Uh, that's just the way that these organisations are. And I think it's very naive to think that somebody who buys wholeheartedly into a sort of a messianic religion just gets rid of that because they don't quite like the lifestyle. I don't think that that's well, true. Well, like I say, you can get yourself involved in some really bad stuff. And yes, there is redemption. OK, so at the end of the day, 
somebody and people can change. And we're not going to know that if we don't give her a chance to come over and stand her But trial. there's some people, though, some crimes that are so heinous. Like, for example, when I think going off topic but sl slightly linked, when I think of things like the killing of Jim, Jimmy Bulger, this little boy that I remember from mm -hmm. my childhood who got tortured mm -hmm. by two young boys, people like that, they don't rede deserve redemption. Those people are lost causes for the rest of their lives, as far as I'm concerned. People like this, girls like this, they're lost causes to me, as far as I'm concerned. And I just, uh, I want your views as well. I think I've, <laughs> I've got to say, I know when I'm, I know when I'm in the minority. And on this panel, it's fair to say I am in the minority. But I think I'm in the minority of the land of common sense. I've got to say, maybe I'm deluding myself there because I think what I'm saying is absolutely uh, spot on. These guys disagree with well, me. Well, we agree. She's a nasty piece of work. Well, I, I mean, I think that it's really important that, that British justice works, yeah. and and at, and at the moment, it's being seen not to work. And I think not to bring her back for a trial is yeah. absolutely yeah. wrong.